<clears throat> There's just some people that seem to win and succeed at everything they do. Tom Brady just does his thing. How about that? Oh, let's go! Sensational. The greatest swimmer of all time, Michael Phelps. And he's holding form. What? I have always wondered how come they're always winning? How come? How come you think? And if you're like me, it's easy to look at those people and immediately start comparing yourself to them. Like how many Super Bowls has Tom Brady won by now and how many have I won? Hey Siri, how many Super Bowls has Tom Brady won? Tom Brady has won seven Super Bowls. Tom Brady's won seven Super Bowls and I'm still working on my first. Ash Ketchum has won a Pokemon League in like every region out there. So what's the difference between people like Tom Brady and Ash Ketchum versus you and me? It's easy to start comparing, being like, okay, are they smarter than me? Are they more attractive than me? Are they more charismatic than me? And it's easy to start to recognize a big gap between them the winners and us the losers. Then you start to get a little <laughs> pants and you start to turn pretty negative. Maybe you're thinking, I'm never gonna reach the goals that I set for myself. I'm never gonna get the job that I want. I'm never gonna be with that person that I like I'm never gonna get into that school that I want and like I said We start making that gap between the winners and the losers and we quickly convince our mind and our spirit That we're just not good enough now. I don't know about you But that quickly becomes an overwhelming and hopeless place to be and while I truly believe that there's so many factors that affect this, like, you know, gratitude and mercy towards yourself, honestly, I think it just comes down to this one principle. This is like, this is the one principle that I believe differentiates between the winners and the losers. You cannot rise above how you see yourself. Nothing determines the direction and the success in your life more than your own self image. And the only thing that truly separates the winners and the losers is that winners see themselves as winners and losers see themselves as losers. Now, I first learned this principle from this book right here, and we'll talk more about this book later. But for now, let me tell you a story. January 2020, I had finished the most successful year of my life, financially, spiritually, emotionally, physically, and I was so excited for what laid ahead. I graduated college and I decided to take a break on my business. I accepted a job with some super successful business people in Idaho, which is where I grew up. And I was so eager and excited to learn from them and to contribute to their fast growing company. And so when I moved back to Idaho, my parents were living there. So I decided to temporarily stay with them just for like a month or so until I could find my own place. 2020 was just starting and I could not be more excited. But then, you know what happened next. COVID-19 can be characterized as a pandemic. We will be suspending all travel from Europe. Stay at home. Stay home, stay safe. Quite simply, stay at home. So much like your plans, my plans suddenly changed a lot for 2020. Instead of working in an awesome office with these people, my work became remote and ambiguous. I couldn't find an apartment during the pandemic, so the original month that I was supposed to stay with my parents turned into two months, into three months, six months. By the end of this, this went on for a year and a half. Stuck inside during lockdown, obviously I wasn't out making friends in this new place. <laughs> and honestly, I remember thinking that it had been five straight months since I had even seen anyone even close to my age. Like you, I was just inside and working the whole time. And as a 24 year old excited to live life, as you know, this was not a great place to be. And sure enough, as that year went on, I noticed that my thoughts slowly started to get the better of me. I no longer saw myself as a winner and honestly, I kind of slowly stopped expecting great things of myself. I started focusing on all the failures and all the things that I wasn't doing that I wanted to be doing. I started feeling so negative that I kind of stopped my own business. I wasn't making any friends and I was still just living in my parents' basement. And it hurts to say this, but after so long of going through this, ultimately I came to believe this, this one phrase. I'm just the failing business owner living in his parents' basement with no friends and miles and miles and miles away from who I want to be. My perception of myself became so low, but I eventually felt so broken down that I feel like I was ready to change. In fact, I remember one day I was driving into my car and I was, I was honestly, earnestly praying to God. And I remember the words came out of my mouth, like this isn't usually something that I would say, but the words came out of my mouth, thank you for breaking me down and for building me back up. And sure enough, he did build me back up, but he mainly helped me rebuild my self-image. 
You see, I had a friend who recommended a book to me and because of its intriguing kind of weird title, I was intrigued. The book was written in 1960 by a plastic surgeon named Dr. Maxwell Maltz. And so Dr. Maltz found it fascinating that sometimes he would fix a scar on a person's body or on their face and it would dramatically improve like nearly every aspect of their life. And yet other people, he would fix something that they wanted done and it made no difference at all. In fact, sometimes it even made it worse. So what was the difference? The operation, like the physical operation was pretty much the same with all these different people, but how come some people felt so happy and successful afterwards and other people just like plunged into more of a failure. So after decades and decades of research, Dr. Maltz found success in a person's life didn't depend on their outward appearance. Instead, it depended almost 100% on how that person viewed themselves. You see, when a person imagined themselves like a winner and they saw themselves as a winner, sure enough, their daily actions and behaviors, they, they acted like a winner. Those daily winning behaviors led to actual winning. For example, I was really blessed to have lots of teachers and parents and lots of adults when I was a small kid tell me that I was really smart. And so sure enough, any day at school, I would act like I was really smart and that led to doing things smartly. Apparently I didn't learn very great grammar though. I never struggled in elementary, middle or high school because I really believed that I was a smart kid. But you see the self image works the opposite direction as well. Like if you really view yourself as a loser and you truly believe deep down that you are a loser, your actions and behaviors are going to follow that image that you have of yourself. And sure enough, those losing attitudes that you have are going to lead to actual losses. For example, for whatever reason, I totally convinced myself in high school that I was not a good basketball player. And if you know me, you're probably like, no, no, John, that's for real. You are not a good basketball player. But it's funny because I'm quick, I'm fast, I'm athletic. I feel like I should be pretty good at basketball. But for whatever reason, I have stuck in my mind that I'm good at other sports, but not basketball. And so sure enough, because I viewed myself as a loser, anytime I play basketball, it's like a self-fulfilling prophecy. Okay, so self-image, but how does that work scientifically? Well, Dr. Maltz's reasoning was this. Our subconscious mind is the most powerful computer in the world. When it's given a goal, it accomplishes that goal. Automatically, like without any conscious active effort. Our subconscious mind is like a torpedo. When a torpedo is launched from a submarine, it's first given a target. And that torpedo is going to constantly be making course corrections to make sure that it arrives and detonates and intercepts at its target. Our subconscious mind is the exact same way according to Dr. Maltz. Whenever we consciously give and choose to give our subconscious mind a goal, then our subconscious is gonna believe it and make it happen. It's instinctual, like we can't help but accomplish that goal, whether it's a positive or a negative goal, a success or a failure. And accomplishing those positive and negative goals is instinctive on our part, much like geese know how to fly south for the winter. Hey, I actually pointed the right, that, that was actually south. And so animals already have their goals given to them. Geese are gonna fly south. Squirrels are gonna gather nuts for the winter. Spiders are gonna spin their webs and platypus is gonna make this sound. Ah, I'll never get tired of you doing that. It's instinct, right? Like those animals don't have to be taught how to do those things. They just have that goal already in them and they know how to do it a lot of times just from birth. Well, humans were not robbed of those same instincts, except we have the choice as to what our goal is that we're going to give to our subconscious to accomplish. And one of the biggest ways that we feed those goals to our subconscious mind is through our thoughts and our imagination. If you're constantly just thinking about how you're gonna fail at something and you're so afraid of it that you're just always thinking about that failure, your subconscious is going to reach that goal of failure. That's what you spent your time imagining and thinking about. For example, if you're on the golf course and all you're thinking about is that bunker on the east side. Hey, I got my directions right again. This is actually east. And all you're thinking about is the bunker on the east side of the green. And that's all you're thinking about. You're so afraid of it. You're going to hit it in the bunker. You spent all your imagination, not, not planning on, not expecting and imagining and living success. You were living your failures. Same thing if you're like a college student or something. If you're spending the entire semester thinking that you're gonna fail all your assignments and that's all you think about is failing, failing, failing your assignments. Maybe you did fail an assignment in the past and you just keep reliving that and rehashing it. Then guess what? You are going to fail more assignments. 
or if you see someone that you like and you go, you try to go to approach them, but all you're thinking about like, oh, what if they reject me? What if they reject me? Like, what if they aren't into me? Guess what? If your imagination is only focused on failure and that's all you see, then that's what's gonna happen to you most times than not. Like, it's automatic. Whatever we feed to our mind, that's what our mind accomplishes. It's such a gift, but it can also be such a curse if you don't use it the right way. And unfortunately, that's what happened to me. In 2020, all that I thought about and all that I imagined, all that I viewed myself as was just a failed business owner living in the parents' basement. Could I have moved out? Yes. Did I still have a business that was making me money? Yes. But like I said in the beginning, you cannot rise above your self-image. And while my self-image was way down here, it didn't matter what was actually happening in the world. I was never gonna rise above that. I, like, I literally prevented myself from moving out and from doing the things that I wanted to do because all I could think about were just the failures. But like I said, I finally accepted that I was broken and ready to be rebuilt. Yeah, sure, maybe I had made mistakes, but I am not a mistake. Yeah, I may have failed at a few attempts before, but I am not a failure. Okay, yeah, I lost at a few things, but I'm not a loser. I even started applying it to running. I may have run a slow run before, but I am not a slow runner. That was a slow run, but I am not a slow runner. I've also been playing a lot of volleyball in the last year, and I'm a good hitter. And so whenever I do make a mistake, which happens every once in a while, when I go up to spike the ball and I hit it into the net or I hit it out of bounds, instead of spending my time like apologizing to my team, like, oh my gosh, my bad, my bad, I made that mistake, I made the mistake, and instead of reliving my mistake, instead I immediately forget it. And I go back and in my imagination, I relive my best hits over and over again and I feel, I feel how good it feels to hit the ball really well. And in that way, any mistake that does happen doesn't throw me off. I still view myself as a good hitter. So anyways, as I started reading this book and as I started imagining not my failures, but instead imagining my successes again, sure enough, about three to four weeks later, I set a record breaking month in my business. Out of nowhere, I found it easy to show up every day and work because I was already imagining in my mind the successes of that day. Sure enough, those good thoughts led to good actions, led to success and led to wins. It was amazing and by the time I let go of my negative self-image and replaced it with what I used to have as my positive self-image and that I am a winner, I moved back to a place where I had lots of friends, I moved back to a place where I wanted to be and wanted to make new friends and to grow my business and it, it's just been incredible. It's funny because all these things that I'm doing right now, I could have done a year ago or a year and a half ago, but because my self-image was way down here, I was never going to rise above that until I fixed that image. So I just wanna share a few more things from the book. As you read this book, one of the many secrets you will come to understand is this. You can be happy now, as well as every single day you are working toward achieving your goals. When you discover happiness along the way, instead of expecting that you can only be happy once you've achieved a goal, then you've already fulfilled the promise of psycho-cybernetics. I noticed that once I started imagining the success and not only just imagining, but feeling like the results and the feeling of that success right now, instead of waiting for some time in the future, when I chose to feel those feelings of success now, I, I found myself being successful now. Now in the book, there's a lot of like meditation techniques and stuff that it goes through. Some of them I really liked, others didn't really fit me, but that's up for you to decide for yourself. Okay, so here's another thing that I like. All your actions, feelings, behaviors, even your abilities are always consistent with this self-image. In short, you will act like the sort of person you conceive yourself to be. Not only this, but you literally cannot act otherwise in spite of all your conscious efforts or willpower. The man who conceives himself to be a failure type person will find some way to fail in spite of all of his good intentions or his willpower, even if opportunity is literally dumped in his lap. Like it doesn't matter how good like your willpower, like I, I like in my situation, I knew that I was a hard worker. I knew that I like putting forth effort wasn't the problem. It's not like I was lazy or anything, but I was viewing myself deep down as a failure. And so despite all my willpower, despite all my efforts, I was never going to succeed until I stopped thinking that and realized that I am a winner. I always have been a winner. No, I've not been perfect and I've made a thousand, I've made thousands and thousands of mistakes, but that's always how I learned how to win. Okay, so another bit that I like. Dr. Maltz says that man has an automatic goal striving machine called the subconscious mind. This creative mechanism within you is impersonal. It will work automatically and impersonally to achieve goals of success and happiness, 
or unhappiness and failure, depending on the goals that you yourself set for it. Present it with success goals and it functions as a success mechanism. Present it with negative goals and it operates just as impersonally and just as faithfully as a failure mechanism. If you feed yourself positive goals of success, that's what's gonna happen to you. If you spend your time feeding yourself negative goals of failure, that's what's gonna happen to you. Another one that I love. Use your creative imagination to picture to yourself just how you would act and just how you would feel if you had already succeeded. That helped me tremendously. When I already had that, when I just imagined that winning feeling and remembered all the times in my life that I did win at big things, I was already feeling success for the things that I was gonna do that day. And as a result, I did all the things necessary to actually win. Hi, it's, it's me, John. You may recognize me from the video you were just watching. But anyways, I was sitting here editing, editing this video and I realized that I forgot one really important part of the book that I love and that I just had to share. We act or fail to act, not because of will, as is so commonly believed, but because of imagination. If you're not doing the things that you wanna do, it's not because you're lazy, it's not because you it's not because you don't have enough willpower or effort. You just don't really see yourself as achieving those things. And until you can really, really believe that you can achieve those things, and you know you get that by doing small things to work towards those goals, like you're not just gonna b believe it all at once. It takes time. But once you can start imagining successes, then the willpower and the effort just follows through. So anyways, back to the video. Like if we go back to Tom Brady, if all he does is just reimagine to himself all the times that he's thrown an interception or an incomplete pass, then his mind is focused on interceptions and incomplete passes, and that's what he's gonna get. So instead of beating himself up over it, he realizes that, yeah, hey, sometimes I make mistakes, but I'm gonna choose to imagine my successes. Instead of getting mad at himself, Tom Brady says to himself, he's going to choose, he's going to choose to imagine his successes instead of dwell on his failures. Now, I'm definitely a religious person, and God said that he made man in his own image. That is the most important self-image of all. You are not inherently a loser. You are destined to succeed. You can't help but succeed at whatever you tell yourself to. Now, there's seriously, I wish I could just read you this book. There's so many bits to it. I can't even choose even a handful to choose in this video, but I really hope two things. One, I really hope you get a copy of the book. I usually do Audible uh, to listen to audiobooks and stuff, but I found that it was kind of a difficult read uh, or a difficult listen, and so I wanted to read it instead. And the second thing I hope is that you start viewing yourself as a winner because you can be if that's what you spend your time thinking about. I look back at any big thing that I've accomplished in my life, even small things that I've accomplished in my life, any big momentous milestone that I finally overcame and accomplished, I did so because deep down I knew that there was no other option. I knew that I was a winner, that I was destined for success, and that literally no power in the universe could stop me. Now there's other things that I want to accomplish that I don't know if I can, but instead of imagining myself failing at those things, each day, I'm gonna try to just imagine to myself what it's gonna feel like when I do succeed at those things. Now, maybe I'll make a different video on like different like meditation practices and stuff like that, but seriously, you cannot rise above your own self-image. That's what makes winners win and losers lose, just based on how they view themselves. So, hope you liked this video. So that, that way more people can hear this message, please remember to like and subscribe. And this video is brought to you by PlannerVid. PlannerVid is the complete tool to grow your YouTube channel to 100,000 subscribers or more. It tells you what to film and how to film it. That way you don't have to focus on all like the, you know, techie research, technical stuff of YouTube. Instead, PlannerVid can tell you what to film and that way you just have fun creating it all. Like I love every time that I log into PlannerVid and I can just ask it like, okay, what should I be filming next? Makes it a ton of fun. That way I'm just focused on creating videos rather than just spending endless time, endless amount of time watching other people's videos. So again, thank you so much. Remember to like and subscribe, and please, please, please take a look at how you view yourself. And remember that your self-image ultimately determines the success and failure that you'll achieve in your life. All right, well, speaking of self-image, I think I'm looking a little skinny actually, so I think it's time for a cheeseburger.